we are glad that they are here this morning. As we sang that song, I don't know if this is the day we've waited for with all the snow and the cold out there, but certainly it is good to be together here in God's house to worship us this morning and welcome to probably what is a bigger online audience than we have physically in the building, and that's okay. To all of our online folks, welcome. Good to have you with us in worship today as we do celebrate this day that the Lord has given us. And let me share with you a few thoughts of those things that are taking place. I'm Pastor Kevin, in case you're new with us today and you don't know who I am. Uh, this is Pastor Bob to my right, the maestro, and our <laughs> praise team. Appreciate them. This morning, following this service, we are going to go ahead and proceed with our, our business meeting that we need in order to confirm or approve the finances from the year 2021 and our leadership teams, our vision board for 2022. Those of you that are online with us, we ask you to stay with us. We're going to continue to live stream the sharing of that information. And those of you that are on Facebook, if you would like to go ahead, those of you that are members, vote online. We are going to make provision for that as well. Uh, if more than one person is watching from the same household and you're both members, or you have more than two members, then each of you would need to indicate your name and vote yes or no. So we'll get to that later on here in our morning together. Right now, let me remind you that we have our Wednesday night activities happening, and that will include our handbell choir. We had eight, nine folks interested, and that will take place at six o'clock. And then also our Wednesday night Kings Kids, or Wednesday night uh, kids program and our Bible study. As of right now, we're still holding off our verdict for King's Kids and our youth tonight to see how the snow uh, evaporates or disappears, hopefully, <laughs> by 3 or 4 o'clock, and the roads will be in much better condition, so stay tuned for that. Also, let me share with you that our youth are having an outing on Saturday. That's from 2 to 6, so please see Davina for more information regarding the outing. Our kids are having an art class Thursday at 6.30 p.m. on January 27th. And coming up in February, two things to make mention of this morning specifically. The first Wednesday night will be our meal fellowship. Time to get together. Menu includes ham and cheesy potatoes, green beans, dinner rolls, and you can purchase your tickets and sign up at our table out in the narthex. You'll have a couple weeks to do that, but we want you to get a head start. Also, in February, we're going to have a Valentine's banquet. This is for all adults, single or married. You're invited to attend. You're encouraged to invite friends to attend because it's going to be not only an evening of good food as Chef George brings the menu to our tables, but we're also going to have two comedians with us. So it'll be a great night to, as we say, live, laugh, and love. And so get your tickets ahead of time and purchase those. You can do that uh, with the insert in your bulletin, the PDF that's online at our Facebook page, and get those into Tawana in the office. And good outreach opportunity. Maybe you got a friend you can bring with you or a couple that you can invite to, to come. Maybe you even think about paying their way and say, hey, we've got these great comedians coming. Come and laugh, come and enjoy a time together. I'll encourage you to read through all of those things that are happening in the bulletin. Stay up to date on our Facebook page and our website, and let's continue to worship the Lord this morning.
There's no God like Jehovah. 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 amazing you know when we were getting ready to start today we looked over and there was one guy sitting in the pews and that was it and we were sitting there and we go you know what doesn't matter doesn't matter because the audience that we're playing for was already here and I'm sorry Joy we're not talking about you I, I'm talking about God and, and <laughs> And you know, it was just it was just really cool. And and I've always viewed this, and the praise team has always viewed this as um we sing, you guys sing, and we're all one band singing to the uh, the Almighty. And that's what it's all about. And today he made a way for you guys to get here today. And I mean I, I, I'm you know I'm impressed. Uh, you guys made it. It's, it's not nice out there. And I'm glad that you guys over there in Interwebland are listening and watching as well. It's really cool. And, and I hope you're warm and cozy and hopefully you're in your PJs sipping a cup of coffee while you're worshiping. I like that. And it's just one of those things that no matter what happens in your lives, you know, it's just, it's just really cool because sometimes it just looks like there's nothing. There's just no way. There's just... You're going, it's hopeless. But um, God has a way to make a way when there is no way. And, and I love the first lines of this song. It says, you are here and you're moving in our midst. God is always moving. We just have to find out where and how we can be a part of it. And it just is really cool. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being here.
He is the one that guides us and strengthens us. And when those times come that are challenging, that are difficult, and we're not sure of the path that we are supposed to take, God is there once again, his hand guiding us and strengthening us. We come to a time in our service where we recognize our offering and giving back to God. And as we think about our offerings and that he is a way maker, as you will hear later on in our business meeting, we were able to close the books on 2022 uh, without being in debt, or 2021 without being in debt. That's always a positive. We know there'll be challenges in this year ahead once again. And so your faithful giving, whether that's by person here in the building, online, or through those gifts mailed into the church, we certainly appreciate that. In addition, this morning, we want to recognize our family of the week, Tom and Deb Gibbs, and be lifting them in prayer. And we've also added a couple of names to our prayer list, uh, Jordan McKinney and Tom Hilliard, and we want to be praying uh, for those individuals, those families. And remember our military personnel and remember our missionaries. And let us take a moment now to bow our heads and to spend an intimate, quiet moment with God as we lift these thoughts to him. God, as we sing these words to you this morning, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, God, that's who you are. You are for us, not against us. You make a way. You go before us and beside us and behind us. Lord, you are the one who is trustworthy. Lord, you are the one in which our foundation can be firmly planted. You are the rock. And Father, as we live into this year of 2022 and we believe that with you all things are possible, we come once again today to renew our faith. Father, there may be some of us here this morning that are struggling, that are weak, that are discouraged. And this is a moment that we spend together, whether we're here in person or we're so thankful for our online community through the presence of live streaming, that we all can, by the power of your Holy Spirit, be lifted up. And Father, may that sense of your fresh wind of the Holy Spirit touch each and every one of us this morning on all corners of the globe. Fathers, we think about brothers and sisters around the world worshiping with us at these moments, have already worshiped or will worship later on today. We are all a part of your kingdom, a part of the family of God. And Father, may we, as your children, we as your church, continue to love, minister, encourage, reach out, share the ministry and share the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ with all who will have ears to hear. Father, as this church comes before you today, we lift up our offering to you. We thank you for the gifts that you have given to us. We appreciate that we are involved in the process of how you impact the world because we get to give back to you. We get to serve with you. We get to experience your abundance, your grace, Father, pour out your abundance upon us this morning as we are faithful in our giving. Father, we lift up those that we've mentioned to you this morning, lifting up our missionaries, pray, praying for the Lamb family in Papua New Guinea, praying for the Cybersons and continued restoration of Vicky's health. Lord, we lift up Tom and Deb. We thank you for their, just their faithfulness and their ministry within this church, within this fellowship of believers. Both of them are consistent without seeking accolation ministering to us Tom with the drums and Debbie with helping our fellowship and in many ways that she impacts the daily lives of those within the church Lord strengthen their marriage and encourage them and keep them healthy and strong Father we lift up to you those that are continuing to deal with sickness and those maybe with COVID or other illnesses this morning may your power fall fresh upon them we lift up to you Two names we added this morning, Jordan and Tom. And Lord, we ask for you to wrap your arms of love around them and their families. Father, all who are in need this morning. Once again, Father, that is who you are. Your characteristics, 
your qualities, your attributes never, ever change. You love us so much, just the way that we are. But you also love us too much to leave us that way. You want to see us continue to grow in full devotion to Christ. Thank you, Father, for who you are as we pray these things in the power and the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper underneath your breath I hear your SOS your SOS I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night it's true I will rescue you. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be your shelter. I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath I hear your SOS your SOS I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night it's true Stop marching to reach you in the middle.
God can, and God can and will rescue you. Thank you to Kensington for sharing that beautiful message and song with us this morning. Let me remind you of our theme for 2022, with God all things are possible. This theme rooted in the scripture that we focus on in Matthew 19, verse 26, Jesus looked at them said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen? Even in the midst of the snow again this morning, and man, what a week of snow we've had. All things are possible. God made it a way for some of you to be able to get here this morning, and he's made a way for others of us to be gathered online. I'm so thankful for us because the promise is there for each and every one of us today that God is with us in all things things are possible. Let's pray together again this morning and praying that prayer that God's laid upon our heart for the year. Lord, you are faithful all the time. Your promises endure forever, and there is no limit to what you can do. In your hands, all things are possible. You are the one who conquered death and made a place for us in heaven. And may we never, never, ever, ever cease to sing your praises as you prove your faithfulness time and time again. And Father, I might add, as we open your word this morning, teach us and instruct us in your ways always, for in Christ's name that we pray, amen, amen. As we continue our understanding of what this phrase means for us, today I want to focus on what it looks like in all things. Last week we looked at what it means to be with God, in connection with God, in that relationship with God. Next week, as we come back together again, we're going to talk about are possible, those things that are possible, the possibilities that God will bring into our lives accordance with his will, not our will, but his will. That's absolutely essential to us in the Christian faith and the Christian journey, because in order for God to bring to fruition those things through his power, through his, his absolute ability to do what he believes and what he desires for us, it's important that we have that connection with him. It's vital daily that we connect with God. As we think about what it means for all things this morning, remember last week I talked about in the early church, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, uh, in the relationship that they had that Jesus was everything to them. In fact, the scripture says they devoted themselves daily, daily to teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of the bread and prayer. And once again, everyone was filled with awe at all the miraculous signs performed by the apostle. And we talked about what's so different from the early church and perhaps what's different today in our church in 2022. And it is that recognition for us, is Jesus everything or is Jesus just something in our daily lives? And as we look at the aspect of all things, and we're going to key in on all, all things that are possible. I wonder how many of us are willing to allow God into all things in our lives, every area of our lives. Are we once again more like, God, I'll allow you into some things, or I'll allow you into some areas of my life? I know for myself, I struggle with that. Yeah, I struggle with that. As a pastor, God, are you able to be in all the things that I think about, all the things that I do, all the things that I plan? Or are there some areas where I'm kind of hesitant, God, I'm not sure I want to give complete control to you in some of these areas? I struggle with that. And at the heart of that center, or at the center of the heart of that struggle, is that concept of surrender to God. God, am I willing to surrender everything to you? Am I willing to give you control when I think that I know better? Or when I believe that what I desire and what I'm going to plan for is better than what you desire for me or what you have planned for me? I mean, isn't that, isn't that true? I mean, it's a matter of trust. God, can I trust you? Or do I trust myself more? Sometimes I'm not willing to trust God in in a particular area. I'm not willing to let go. I'm not willing to submit or to surrender. Yeah, I want to. I think we all want to. 
But sometimes when it's God versus us, we kind of tend toward us and say, yeah, I want to have things my way. I want to do this my way. I'm not willing, God, to give you complete control right now. I think of it in terms of a great analogy that was shared with me many, many years ago called My Heart Christ Home. Anybody familiar with that? description of that analogy. What you literally do in thinking about my heart, Christ home, is you take like the blueprint of your house or the blueprint of a house and you like impose it on the image of your heart. And what do I mean by that? That means that we would see in our heart those different rooms that were in our, that are in our houses. And so we would literally have a room that's our kitchen. We would have a room that's the living room. We would have a room that's perhaps the bathroom. We have a room that's the bedroom, the study. Uh, Maybe you have a workout room. Maybe you have a garage workroom or a a basement workroom. But you have all these different areas in your house that you literally could see as your heart being Christ's home. And we say, God, do I allow Christ, do I allow you, God, to be in every area of my heart or my rooms? Or are there some areas where I keep the door shut? Are there some areas where I keep the door locked? Because in our heart, it is, it is the analogy of that's where God's Spirit dwells. That's where the Holy Spirit dwells. And the Holy Spirit does what? The Holy Spirit strengthens us or empowers us. The Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit gives us what? Understanding and wisdom. The Holy Spirit gives us self discipline. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. The Holy Spirit comforts us. And if we're not allowing God's Spirit in those rooms within our heart, then God's not able to do His work in us, and therefore not all things are possible because we're not surrendering all things to Him. You say, well, Pastor, how does that really play out? Well, let's talk about the kitchen. Let's talk about the things that we feed ourselves We say, God, do you have control of those things which I feed myself in my life? I might be feeding myself lots of money or lots of power or prestige or those things that I'm desiring. God, do you have control of those areas? Or you look at your living room, you look at the things that bring entertainment into your life or the fellowship that you have with other people, and you're saying, God, do you have control of those things? The things that I am taking in in my living room, my entertainment area, Or you might say in your bedroom, God, do you have control of the relationships that I have with my spouse? Or is there other areas that I'm not willing to give to you because of pornography or lust or other things that might happen? You see, we can continue to use that analogy in every room. In my work, God, do you have control of all things in the the work that I do? And we have to take inventory and say, God, are you a part of all things? Or am I keeping you locked out of certain areas of my life, in the rooms of my heart? And those doors are shut, God, because I don't want you meddling in those areas. I don't want you messing up what I already have. I don't want you to be aware. Well, he already is aware (laughs) of those things in those rooms. Why is that? that we don't allow God through the power of his Holy Spirit to enter into those areas of our lives and we keep those doors locked tight, shut up. And the power of his Holy Spirit is not able to be at work in us and therefore not all things are possible because we're not surrendering all things to God. Let's look at our text this morning. Romans 8. Chapter 8 of Romans, referred to as by many the great eight. There's so much in this to unpack in this passage of Scripture. But we're going to be reading verses 28 through 39. And let us reflect upon this Scripture in light of all things, allowing God into every area of our lives. Reading in verse 28. And we know that in all things... God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, to the likeness of his son, Jesus, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things... 
if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against them whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. For Christ Jesus who died, more than that, the one who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? For as it is written, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all this, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? I mean, this phrase keeps ringing throughout the passage of Scripture, all things, all things, all things. So what does that mean for us this morning? If you're following along in your notes, and I hope you are, in all things, the first phrase that we see right there off the bat in Romans 8, 28, is all things, in all things, God is working together for good. We know that not all things are good. We recognize that. We as human beings absolutely go through life experiencing some things that we would consider not good. It's not good to experience those things. It's not good to experience heartache and brokenness and death and loneliness and separation and all of those things that we could consider not good. But we do know that God causes all things to continually work together for our good. And that's what we have to identify and recognize. I mean, when Paul writes, for those who love God, all things are working together for good, he's writing to encourage us, he's writing to encourage those early Christians who are what? Experiencing difficult circumstances, who are going through trials, who are, in fact, discouraged when things become difficult. And who of us cannot identify with that? getting discouraged when things are difficult, thinking in the back of our mind, pastor says, with God, all things are possible, but right now it doesn't seem possible because I'm so discouraged, I'm so depressed, I'm so downtrodden because it's been a difficult time. Yes, that happens in our life, and Paul is recognizing that and saying, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged when things get difficult. And I know that's not easy. <laughs> Easier to say that than to live it. But really what Paul is saying to us when we look at all things is he urges us to look beyond those present circumstances, those present challenges, those present difficulties, and to recognize and to see the glory that will eventually be revealed in us as the scripture said, we're being conformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ and he gives us two components here that I do not want us to miss. A, in your notes, it's subjectively, is to those of us who what? Love God. That's first and foremost the requirement, that we love God. Now, we looked at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5 last week, and we see in Deuteronomy 6, 5, love the Lord your God once again with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength. That's one of the components of how we know that God is working together for our good as we love him. And secondly, objectively, it is to those who are called according to his purpose. Not my purpose. <laughs> Not our purpose, but once again, what God's purpose is for us. His good, perfect, and pleasing will. And we look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, and we know that we are what? God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do what? To do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And often when we as followers of Christ say, God has not equipped me to do the things that I believe he wants me to do or, or he desires for me to do, that's foolish because scripture says what? He's prepared us in advance to do those things. He's equipped us. Yeah, we may not all have the same gifts, and I'm so glad that we don't. It would be boring. 
But collectively, together, God has created us with his handiwork, knit us together in our mother's womb so that we have the ability collectively as a fellowship of believers to do the things that God has called us to do. So when we say, with God, all things are possible, that's every one of us participating, every one of us contributing and becoming a part of what God wants us to do. And I know this, that, that our interests are never absent from the heart of God. His loving hand, his loving guidance will be there with us always, through all things. For God wants to do all things. He wants to make all things work together in us who love him, who listen to him in obedience. We're conformed to the image of his son. You know, our aim to grow in full devotion to Christ is all a part of that. But we cannot We must not leave out any work of the church so that we can get there. We must do it all. I mean, being Christian, being a follower of Jesus is so much more than showing up on Sunday morning to listen to me be a talking head for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it might be. It's so much more than just coming to Sunday morning worship. Being a Christian involves taking seriously the disciplines of of prayer and Bible reading and mission and evangelism. All those things. Being a Christian means developing redemptive relationships with others where we're a part of God's redemptive work because we're building relationships with one another. And all if, you do, if all you do is sit through Sunday mornings, sit through these sermons, folks, you're missing the depth of what God desires for you in Christ. You're only touching the surface. Those of you online with us, if all you do is sit through this service, you're missing what God desires for us. In all things, God is working together for good. But now let's drop down a little farther in the text. And the phrase, all things, shows up again, this time in verses 31 and 32. And I would say here, in all things, God is for us, and God will give to us. According to what Paul has written here, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? That's a great question. If God is for us, who can be against us? Anybody have an answer? No one. God is almighty. God is all powerful. God is all things for us. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, How will he not also along with him, what does this say there? Graciously give us all things. And I might add once again there, according to his will. Not my will, not what I desire, not what you desire, but trusting him, surrendering to him so that he gives us all things that he desires for us. Over these past years, past two years, have you not felt overwhelmed? Have you not felt Like, God, is it really possible to go on? I mean, is it really possible for us as a church to make a difference in this world? Can we, little us, little full devotion FBC church in Canton, compared to all these other bigger churches in this area, can little us do what is required for us to do? I mean, can we build new programming? Can we reach new people? Can we create new ministries? Can we start new groups? Can we impact our community? Little old us? Is it possible? Are the obstacles too great? (laughs) Is the cost too high? Is there that much energy here? Yes. Overwhelmingly, yes. Because with God, all things are possible. But there is a requirement that we have to ask, we have to pray, we have to commit, we have to be dedicated to that which God has called us to do, that which he prepared in advance for us to do. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 11, we're reminded of these words. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him. 
if I, even with my wrong intentions and my sin and my difficult struggles in being a father, knew how to give good gifts to my children, and sometimes they got some pretty good gifts, maybe not always, (laughs) not always able to do all that they wanted to do, but how much more will your Father in heaven give those good gifts to those who ask him? All things possible. Now let's point out a couple of things here in this this passage of Scripture, just to be reminded as we go through it in your notes. Number three, God will not condemn us. We see that in Romans 8, 34. Who then is the one who condemns? Well, it's not God, no one. Because Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Now Paul started out this passage of Scripture in Romans 8, 1 by saying there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And he reiterates that here for us. He's wanting us to know, you will not be condemned. Those of you who have called upon the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, in a relationship with him, daily surrendering to him in obedience, we will not be condemned. Because Christ has taken on that punishment for us. Most of us know John 3.16, don't we? We shake our heads. Can you shake your heads with me and say, you know John 3.16? A lot of you online could probably type it in the chat. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall what? Not perish, but have everlasting life or eternal life. I've always liked to encourage people to memorize the next verse. And if you've never done that, memorize John 3.17. And what does it say? For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world will be saved. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. See, we add that to John 3.16, and we understand so much more of the meaning in sharing that message with other people. Maybe we should all go to football games and sporting events and all those things and hold up John 3.17. And people will get a better understanding. All they've seen is John 3, 16. God did not come here to condemn us. God did not come here so that we could all be tortured and put away for good, for evil, for the things that we've done. No, he came to save us. For those who call on the name Lord Jesus Christ, for those willing to trust no matter what, to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the scripture says what? He's seated at the right hand of the Father. That's a position of prestige and honor, interceding on our behalf. You know, I might say this this morning, our future glory that Paul talks about is assured by the perfect defeat of our adversary, by the perfect advocate who intercedes on our behalf. And Paul reminds us that Christ died, Christ arose, Christ ascended and intercedes for us in heaven. And because of that, number four this morning, in all things, God makes us super victorious. God makes us super victorious. Just like those Cincinnati Bengals. You were waiting for that this morning. Some of you wonder where I might throw that in. No. Let's look at Romans 8, 37, because it says, in all these things, once again, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Now that Greek word conquerors, it it finds its origin in the Latin word hooper, H-U-P-E-R, and then in the word that we get the tennis shoe word from, or the sneaker word from, Nikeo, or Nike, Nike meaning what? Victory. Super victory. The literal translation, we are super victors through him who loved us. It takes a whole English phrase to translate one Greek word so that we can understand how strong and how vivid this is. That we are super victorious. And I would say that our ability to be super victors is not based on our own human ability. There's nothing I can do to assure that I'm super victorious. There's there's no self-discipline or self-determination that I can do on my own to make sure that I am super victorious. But that victory in all things comes through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ conquered. He conquered every foe he met. He defeated death. He is the one who is super victorious through all things, and in him, so are we. 
We get the grace. We get the strength from him to become conquerors and super victorious. And then with the masterful stroke of the hammer, Paul drives home the truth in this passage of Scripture in Romans 8 of no separation. Number five, God will not separate himself from us. In all things, God will not separate himself from us, his children, who are in fellowship with him. We go back to Romans 8, 35, 36, and we read, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword? As, as it is written, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. You know, throughout history, Christians have been counted as sheep to be slaughtered. But we know, because we're here today as followers of Christ, that Christians have lived triumphantly through it all. They have been super victorious. And so too shall you and I, who are followers of Christ, because with God all things are possible. Paul's so convinced here, he, he is so emphatic beyond a shadow of a doubt that in all things nothing will separate us from Christ, the love of Christ, that he gives us all kinds of examples. Nothing will separate us between Christ and those of us who are Christians. I mean, look at these, these concepts of distress that he mentions, these concepts of hardships, these difficult situations that all of us could, could identify. I mean, when we feel the literal tight squeeze in our life of going through some of these things, no trouble, okay? What trouble have you been through? No hardship, Okay, what kind of hardship have you been through lately or in your past? No persecution. Now, I don't know how many of us have really truly been persecuted, but we know there are people all over the world being persecuted for their faith today. No food. Once again, something I don't think we struggle with too much in this country, even in the midst of, what, snowstorms and lack of supply chains. There's no shortage of food at my house, and I'm pretty sure there's probably no shortage of food at your house. But literally, there are Christians all over the world. I would probably say millions of Christians today that literally have no food, but that does not separate them. They're starving in different places in the world, but that does not separate them from Christ. Nakedness or not sufficiency of enough clothes to keep warm. I don't think that's something we struggle with either. But he goes on to say, no danger, no matter what danger you face, no matter what risk you are taking, ultimately martyrdom by the sword. None of us, most of us probably not currently are experiencing too many of those things, but it might happen down the road or it might come in the future. But when we look at all of that and we get what? Even death will not separate us from Christ. Romans 8, 38 and 39. With God all things are possible, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present, no matter what we're going through right now, as difficult as it may be, Neither the future, we don't know what the future holds, but we know the one who holds the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ that is in, the love that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now let me say there is one thing that can separate us. There is one aspect of life as we look at Scripture in its totality that will separate us from God. And that is leaving Christ out of our lives. That is making a conscious decision to separate yourself from God and the salvation that he offers because you never chose to receive the gift of salvation. You never understood, you never gave up that, that will or that surrender of your own to say, God, I trust you. I believe that Jesus died on a cross for my sins. I desire for him to be my Lord and Savior. I want to follow him the rest of my days. Because the secret, the secret with God, all things are possible. The secret to never be separated from God is to remain firmly in Christ. That's what Paul is saying to us. Firmly remaining in Christ and we can go all the way back to Deuteronomy in the, Old chap in the Old Testament and see in chapter 31, verse 6, these words that we know how important it is to remain in Christ because God has made a promise to us. Be strong and courageous. No matter what you face, do not be what, terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. 
He will never leave you, never forsake you. If God is for us, who can be against us? I would ask again this morning, who will separate us from the love of Christ? A little hardship? Mm -mm. Distress? Uh, No way. Not going to happen. Persecution? Nope. Even if I am persecuted for my faith, it will not separate me from God. In fact, it may draw me closer to him. Will nakedness, peril, or sword? Who's going to separate us from the love of Christ? Will generation gaps separate us? Will taste in our music separate us? Will questions about motives or complaints about money, will issues of race or problems of politics or morality separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord? No, no, no. Amen? That's what the church is called to be. That's what it means with God all things are possible. If we are focused on living out the love of Christ, if we are focused on living out the love of Christ, nothing will stop us. Building trust and love with one another, nothing will separate us, nothing will destroy us, nothing will defeat us. No In all this, we are more than conquerors. We are super victorious through him who loved us. You know, folks, no one has ever promised us that living out, living as the church in Canton, Ohio, is going to be easy. No one's ever promised that. In fact, it may be quite the opposite. It may be difficult. It may be hard. It may require us to just get to work and do what God has called us to do. But with God, all things are possible. So this morning, once again, let us surrender our will. Let us offer him our trust with all of our hearts and remember that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, these words that you've given to us today through Paul, the passage of Romans 8, which is so significant in our faith and important to us to understand, that in all things... God, you are working together for the good of those who love you. In all things, Father, you will, you are there for us. You will give to us. In all things, God, you will not separate yourself from us. Those are significant truths for us to remember as we do experience difficulties in this life. But let us remember, if God is for us, who can be against us? God, you go before us, beside us, and behind us, never leaving us, never forsaking us. All it requires is for each and every one of us to have surrendered our will to you, to have trusted in the lordship of Jesus Christ, to trust in the provision of your salvation, to say, God, yeah, I've made lots of mistakes. I'm... I've sinned. That's what the Bible calls it. I've missed the mark. Father, I want your love through Jesus Christ to forgive me and to guide me and to strengthen me daily. Father, may each and every one of us who have prayed that prayer, and if there's someone out there this morning that's never prayed that prayer, have said those words, contact me through our church website. Contact me through Facebook. Let's have that conversation so that you know that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt like Paul that nothing will ever separate you from God. Father, empower us as we go forward to be able to accomplish all that you have for us. For with God, all things are possible, and all God's people say, amen and amen. Thanks for being with us today, those of you joining us online. Those of you that are members, we ask that you stick around for a few moments as we share together this morning. Those of you that are not members, we give you a moment to leave if you so choose to, or you can stay with us and find out a little bit more about who we are and how you can become a part of this church mission and this church fellowship by perhaps considering being members uh, as we are incorporated, as we are acknowledged uh, by the state of Ohio and the things that we do. A couple of things that we have to take care of at the beginning of the year, and Becky's going to help us here for those of you in the sanctuary, is we have to submit an annual report uh, of which, if you need a copy of that, raise your hand, and Becky will give that to you see some hands going up, and also our leadership structure for the year 2022. 
those that have been asked and invited to become a part of our leadership. And I might ask, if you're someone who wants to contribute, that you believe God has prepared you in advance to do good works, he's equipped you to do some things within our church, and we haven't connected with you to see how you might be involved in those things happening here, please let me know. And we've got a place to plug you in. Like I said, we must all get together doing the work that God has called us to do. Lee Jarvis, you're in the house. If you could come at this time as well to answer any questions we might have about the last page of our annual report, which is the financial disclosure for the end of the year, 2021. He's here. I know Lee's here. Somebody might have to grab him. Make sure he's here present if someone has questions. Thank you. Those of you that are online, like I mentioned, stay with us. We'll try to share information with you as best as we can. You may not have the printed out sheets, but you can express your vote online. We're going to make that provision this morning because of the weather. And mention at this moment, Mindy, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, 24, 25 people present that we know of. 26, Nicole's going to vote online. So 25 in the building that we know of at the moment. which would be enough for us to conduct our business. Lee, you want to come on down front, please? Make the journey to the front. I encourage you to read through the annual report. Those of you that are not here with us today in person, we will have those available in our information rack. In fact, you can pick up one of those pretty much throughout the entire year. They're always available. But directing your attention to the back page, Okay, he's, yeah, we have, we have a wireless microphone. Brady, if anybody has questions online, you see the chat there. If you have a question online, submit that to us. Brady, just like raise your hand, jump up and down, make me aware of what's happening. Officially, I'll call this meeting to order and share with you that our agenda is the approval of the finance report and the approval of our leadership slate. Do I have a motion uh, to accept that agenda and, as we call this meeting to order? I see one from Mickey Thomas and a second from Deb Gibbs. So we'll record that. Mickey Thomas motion, Deb Gibbs second. All those in favor, please say aye. Online, you can chat aye into the box there and you can be a part of what we're doing. Do we have anybody opposed? Same sign. At this time, those will be the only two items addressed in our business meeting. Nothing else can be presented. And so we have the expense report, the financial report on your back page. This is not to approve the budget for the year. We already did that in the fall. We have to do that before we go into the new year. But this is putting a close on the books at the end of the year. And you will see there at the bottom of the page, and these are questions that Lee can answer if you have any, our actual expenses at the end of the year based on our budget and Lee we ended up in the black $53 we have $8,000 in the black because we kept our expenses reduced so income in means that the income we received was $53 more than what we anticipated in the budget, but we also have to our credit in the black $8,382 of actual expense because we remain below the budget. And you would probably recognize that that's somewhat of a likely factor because not all the things that we plan to do in the year, many of our ministries because of COVID continue to be put on hold or rescheduled or replanned for the future. So that is the financial report at the end of 2021. Any questions on that? (laughs) 
Jodine would like an explanation given. She knows why. But if you look at the missions part of the expense report, which is number five on the left with the fund, you will see $29,000 budgeted, but you'll see $34,700 actually in an expenditure. Our goal is to always, always tithe 10% of the income that we receive. That's how we set up the budget. So you'll see that in, in 2022's budget, 29,000 listed based on a budget of $298,000. That is our goal as a pastor. That'll always be my goal for us to make sure that money is going out from this place. It's not just for us to have. Um, and so missions is often able to give above and beyond that because of uh, giving to particular projects or particular ministries. Some people designate their money to missions, and so that goes above and beyond that. Uh, and we also have other uh, resources that come in during the year that we're able to give money uh, to different ministry organizations as well as missions sees fit and the leadership approves that. So does that help? Good. Help you understand that? Always, always, always going to tithe. But isn't it awesome when God gives us more? to be able to give to ministries in need as well. I don't think that's on. Underneath, we got to turn it back on, I think. Or red. <coughs> Is it unmuted? <coughs> okay. <coughs> on the missions, me. people give continually <coughs> through the year to the missions committee. When that happens, that goes into a savings account. So the, the $29,000 is the 10% of what we expect to take in that's subject to mission giving. All the rest of it goes into our savings account and as jo Jodine needs it, we pull it out of the savings account and then she can spend it. That's why the expenditures show higher than what the budget is. We can't budget what we expect people to give other, over and above. Thank you, Lee. Before it becomes your mission to save me from drowning, my own bottle of water. Do we have any other questions? Any questions online, Brady? At this time, I call for a motion to accept the financial report as presented. I see Shane motion and Sally class with a second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Anyone opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, next, you'll have the slate of vision board members and the ministry teams in front of you. Does everybody have one of those? If you need one, Becky will bring one to you. We have what we call our church board, or we call it the church vision board of ministry team chairpersons, along with our treasurer, our assistant treasurer, which you will see has an open position. It has had an open position for a few years now. We do not have assistant treasurer. We would love to have an assistant treasurer. With God, all things are possible. We also have our uh, secretary, Mindy Class. Uh, we also have a chairperson, which we would love to have a church member being the chairperson, uh, but in light of that position not being filled these last few years, that has been assumed by me as chairperson of our vision board. But I would entertain someone else as a member being the chairperson, and then I could focus my efforts on some other things. And then you'll see each chair or each team has a chairperson or a ministry team leader is what we call them. And at the moment, we have an open position for our worship ministry team. That position was held by Davina Herman last year, but you all decided to make Davina Herman the youth director, which we're not complaining about. That's a great thing. We celebrate that. Uh, but it did leave that position open. And so we're trying to locate someone who would be willing to give direction to our worship team, which does not just oversee music things and choir and needs and funding, but also helps with our poinsettias and our Christmas lilies and distributing those to people's homes and decorations in the worship center and communion and all those things that have to happen as well. 
So any questions on our leadership teams? Hearing none, I'll call for a motion to accept our leadership slate for 2022. Seeing Becky Strait make that motion, and a second by Christopher Ackerman. I don't call you Christopher ever, but in the record, it is Christopher, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Any further questions? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Anyone opposed, same sign. Motion carried. That brings to a close all the official items on our agenda for this meeting and I now adjourn the meeting. Let me close in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time that we've been together today, both in worship and conducting official business. We often know official business isn't necessarily pretty or glorif glorified. It's glorifying to you as we do it with right hearts and right intentions, but it's absolutely necessary for us to function as a church. And so we do that. Father, under your will, surrendering ourselves to you, trusting in you in all things. Father, we ask you to provide. Provide in this year ahead. With you, all things are possible. Provide new individuals that would come and be a part and use their gifts in areas where it's needed. Father, provide all the financing that we need to accomplish what you are calling us to do. Father, you could do it all on your own, but yet we get to be a part of it, and that's so exciting to me. Father, may we continue to grow in full devotion to you this year and remind ourselves as we pray daily, with you all things are possible.